Michelle Weaver has an excellent life. Today is the day she landed the hotel manager position after years of hard work. Her loving husband can't wait to celebrate her promotion with her that night. Suddenly, after a horrendous headache and a screeching noise, all the people in her world freeze. Everybody tells her it's time for her to wake from the dream and go back to being who she really is. Identity tourism lets one design and become any character's life while they sleep. But what happens to that character who is part virtual intelligence afterwards? Does the AI character have a say in the reality of its own existence? What if the dreamer never wakes up? Fluff up your favorite pillow and let's find out. Michelle Weaver's dream job is to be a manager of an upscale hotel. She has a meeting with her boss, Reggie, and is hoping he will offer her the promotion she so longs for. To show off her professional skills and humor, she tells him an anecdotal joke, which makes him laugh. Reggie hands her the manager pin and congratulates her on receiving this well-earned position, telling her, you picked the right life. Michelle asks what he will do now that he has retired, and Reggie replies he might become a CEO or a rock star. He's not kidding, and she encourages him to stay at the hotel when he's a famous musician. Go for it, Reggie. I see you as the next Lady Gaga. Everyone is ecstatic that she is the new boss, and she receives a warm welcome from the staff. As the new manager, she is able to deal with tough customers in a way that has them walking away satisfied and smiling. She takes a coffee break and calls her husband Carl to tell him the good news. He is very proud of her and they decide to celebrate later when she finishes her shift. Just then, she has a terrible headache and there is a loud whooshing noise that makes everyone get up and stare. When the pain subsides, she sees everyone surrounding her has stopped, dead in their tracks. She goes outside to see that everyone is gazing upon a giant orb in the sky. The noises continue and she asks if they should run, but instead they calmly become fixated on the pulsating sphere and freeze as if in a trance. One woman asks her how long the downtime will be, then she tunes out too. Michelle zigzags through the crowd, all seem to be put on pause. The narrator tells us Michelle has worked hard all her life to finally get where she is in the world, but now it is the world itself that is about to change. Michelle is about to take a break from life as she knows it and book an extended stay here in the Twilight Zone. No one is reacting to her. Then she sees an officer who tells her it is a scheduled world maintenance and tells her it's time to wake up. He then stares into the sky like everyone else. It is as though they have left their bodies. She makes it home to her husband and thank heaven he is just getting out of the shower. At first he speaks normally and remembers their celebration date that night. But when she tells him about everyone's weird behavior, he starts speaking in a strong Irish accent and remembers, it's the darn bloody downtime signal. She is shocked at his personality change. Carl continues to speak that way, saying he forgot all about it. This clearly is not her husband. She tells him to stop playing and he introduces himself as Danny and says he is going to wake up. Michelle is truly confused, asking what are they waking up from? Danny tells her, are you having a laugh? You can drop the character, mate. She is very afraid and says she is his wife, Michelle, no one else, and gives vivid details about their life together. He sees she does not remember who she was before and tells her she needs to wake up. Carl B., Danny exits the house, saying he can't help her. Michelle begs him not to leave her. The last thing he says before going into suspended animation is that he'll contact them and send some help. Then he is a statue, a husk of himself. Michelle doesn't understand who them is. Michelle is left in her house and two skateboarders pick the lock and enter. She thinks they are home invaders so she brandishes a knife at them. They explain they are customer service and want to diagnose the issue to get her up and running. They are surprised when she doesn't remember anything. They try to calm her, then make the knife dematerialize from her hand. 
The two play her an infomercial on the sleepaway package she purchased, in which she participates in identity tourism. It's a lucid dreaming program in alternate reality, monitored by their servers and shared by millions each time they go to sleep. The orientation video explains that as the host approaches REM sleep, subsonic suggestion technology will synchronize the player with servers, engaging their brain with any dream they choose. The customer creates the avatar of an identity and lives vicariously through them. The only rule is to stay in character. You can live an entirely different life while you sleep, and by the end of your character's day, you wake up refreshed and back to reality. Michelle is shocked and says, You're telling me none of this is real? I am just a character being played by somebody? And the men reply, S. Phineas Lowell. Yes, you are a man. Michelle asks why she doesn't remember any of it, and they tell her, while synced into the program, Phineas had a heart attack and is now in a coma. Normally, she would remember her real identity, but the near-death experience has changed that. They speak to her like a character and say they think they will need to do a forced unsync from this end. This is the best and safest way to restore Phineas to reality. Michelle then asks, best for whom? Him or me? The dudes are like, uh, you are him. He calls her sir, and she says, you're not talking to Phineas, you are talking to Michelle Weaver. She tells him she worked hard to get a promotion today, and she just wants to be left alone to live her life. They contact Sleepaway and send in Phineas' wife, Ellen, who was his emergency contact. They have been married for 15 years and have two children together. Ellen asks that she speak with her alone. As they walk through the unanimated people, Ellen begs him to return to his body, to wake up. Ellen says she understands why he wanted to experience Michelle. She has the characteristics he admired. Ellen describes the first time they met and how he later proposed to her. She tells her husband that if he doesn't unsync by the time the downtime ends, Phineas will be gone forever. They have less than 20 minutes. Michelle feels connected and close to Ellen. They kiss, but Michelle still cannot sense any sign of Phineas within her. Ellen tells Michelle she feels Phineas in the Michelle character and their children are all waiting for him to return. She agrees to stare at the orb, trance out and wake up, but changes her mind at the last second. Michelle then runs to hide out until downtime is over. Then she can go back to her wonderful life as the wife and hotel manager. After that, a customer service skateboard gang is looking all over and reports that they will send some birds out to find her. Helicopters? No. Guess again. She is now the only one still animated. Michelle returns to her hotel, which is vacant. She enters the penthouse suite where she finds the two customers from earlier. She tries to hide out there, but a bird, no, it's actually a stool pigeon, appears at the window and sounds the alarm loud with a growling, distorted, screeching sound indicating they have found her. Birds are the surveillance in this reality. Good idea. With five minutes remaining, customer service intends to unsync her to bring Phineas back to waking reality, but Michelle runs to the roof to escape them. Tom, manager of customer service, is on the roof. He apologizes for the inconvenience she experienced with her sleepaway error. Tom explains they are not sure what happened with her avatar. With downtime almost over, the bodies of the characters below will be filled with new dreamers. Michelle still believes she is alive and real. Tom tells her if she signs a form releasing Sleepaway from responsibility, she can continue to live in this virtual world of unreality for as long as she wants. But Michelle says she wants to go back. She owes it to Phineas and his family to give it a shot. Tom finally informs her that Phineas drank a sleeping pill smoothie and was taken off life support 45 minutes ago. There is no live body to return to. She has until the end of downtime to log out or live as Michelle forever. She doesn't see the point now, knowing none of this is real. But what is reality in the scheme of things? She signs the form and stays in character. As Michelle returns to the hotel, none other than Ellen comes to check in and stay a few weeks. 
The narrator asks, how would you feel if you spent your life making your dreams a reality and then find out reality itself was a dream all along? Today, Michelle Weaver has found meaning in an otherwise synthetic world, and that is good enough for her in the Twilight Zone. Okay, so what did you think of this one? If you could be any character when you went to sleep, what would it be? Let us know in the comments below. If you would like to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next video or playlist on the screen. And please give us a like and subscribe too. Thanks again for watching.